Okay, on to installing Rails. Let's bring up our Rails on Windows environment. And now let's do gem list. You'll see that we got the MySQL 2 gem installed. Now, uh, that was from the previous video. Let's CD to our dev directory and then to our MySQL 2 test. You'll see how I just did dev backslash hit tab. The only directory there is MySQL test, so we can CD into that. And let's bring up Notepad, uh, and we're just going to modify this uh, this test a bit, just for the sake of uh, doing a little bit more Ruby, and uh, and I'll just further uh, further test that we've got everything installed correctly. Now let's change let's change this query to something like this. We're going to do show databases, and we're going to instead of outputting the timestamp, we're going to put out the database. Just like that. Save it. Go back to the command prompt. Let's do ruby test.rb. And you'll notice now it went through each database that it found and it iterated through and it, and it outputted the name of each, right? So th this is a really good test um, that we've got everything installed. Let's cd back to row. And now we're going to uninstall the MySQL2 gem. Okay, and you wonder why are we un why are we uninstalling it? And I'm going to close uh, Notepad here. Um, the reason that we're un uninstalling it is because I want to make sure that when we run Rails, the Rails new command, to make sure that uh, when it runs through and installing the gems, that it can install MySQL 2 from scratch. If MySQL 2 is already installed, Bundler will just say, "Okay, we've got it. It's already installed. We'll just use what's already installed." I want to make sure Bundler can install MySQL 2 from scratch. So we uninstall it, and now let's take a look. Um, let's go CD into dev, and let's see what happens. Uh, I guess first we have to install Rails. So let's do gem install Rails, and let's add a no-ri and no-rdoc, right? So two dashes, no ri, uh, dash ri, two dashes, no-rdoc, and let's hit enter. And this will take a while, so I'll just pause the video, and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so the command uh, completed, and you can see how we've got a whole bunch of uh, output here where it says it's fetching a gem, and it says successfully installed, and it's going through a whole bunch of gems here, and everything looks good. For me, it says 28 gems installed. You should see something similar. Now, uh, from the, this dev directory, uh, we've got the MySQL test, but now we want to create a new project for Rails. We want, and the way we do that is we type in Rails new, and then we'll call it hello underscore world, and then we'll specify the database will be MySQL. Okay, so the dash D is what is where we say what kind of database we were, we want to connect to, and then when we hit enter, it's going to generate a whole bunch of files here, and then after it. In, creates those files, now it's running bundle install, which is a command to install all the gem files required for that particular project. So I'm going to pause it here and I'll come back. Okay, and we're back and you can see that we've got a problem here. And what's happening here is it can't find the MySQL client. And if you remember what we did in the last uh, in the last video, we were able to get it installed, but we had to specify where the client was. And you can see here it says make sure that gem install MySQL2, and here it's specifically saying with this version, make sure that that command succeeds. Well, we know the command succeeds, but we know that we also have to, the, the command by itself will not succeed, but with the particular option, it will succeed. Now, the trick is, how do we get Bundler to make, to use that option when compiling the MySQL2 gem? And the way to do that is we do bundle config, so we're setting the config here, and we want to specify build.mysql2, so just like that, bundle config build.mysql2, and, and what this is saying is when it goes to build mysql2, what option should it should it give it? And this is the option, with dash mysql dash dir equals c colon backslash row my, and then hit tab, and it'll complete the whole directory, and uh, and then hit enter. And again, if when you see these uh, a command like this, don't worry about it. Um, that's just a warning that you can disregard. The now, what did this command do? So let's cd 
to where my to my home directory. Your username obviously is going to be different, and we cd to the bundle directory. Hit dir. <clears throat> excuse me. And from here, if we do a let's just do a more config, and that more is just a command uh, to list the contents of a file. Um, and if there was if there was too many too much content for this window, it would pause, and you could you could uh, so you could continue through it by hitting spacebar. But anyway, so in the config file here, we've got an entry for MySQL2, and here's the option. So it says, basically what it's saying is, Bundler, when you come across MySQL2, build it with this option. Okay, so let's CD back to row, and we're going to go to the dev directory, and hello world. Let's CD into hello world this time. Last time we were up one directory. Now when we run, let's run what it ran, it ran bundle install, we'll run it as well. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so you can disregard this uh, this warning here. And I'll just, I'll just, uh, well actually let's see how quickly it goes here. Uh, I'll pause it and I'll come back. Okay, and we're back. And you can see how it went through using, using, using all the different gems that were already installed. But then here, when it came across MySQL2, it says installing MySQL2. And it looks like it was successful. So let's go back up one directory. So we're in the row dev directory. Let's open up Explorer. And uh, with the dot there, the current directory. And let's just right click on, my, on Hello World, hit delete, and get rid of it for now. And then we'll just close this. And I just want to run through that command one more time just to make sure it was successful. So let's do rails new dash, uh, sorry, hello underscore world, and then dash d mysql. And let's hit enter. And what I'll do is I'll pause it here and come back. And you can see that everything installed properly. And actually, in the end, that was kind of a meaningless test because it ends up just using what was already installed. Um, but we did prove that the bundle install installs MySQL from scratch. Okay, And that's what we want to make sure uh, that you have configured so that when you go to do a new Rails project and you might not have MySQL2 installed, because you've got that bundler config set to uh, specify the, the connector directory, uh, you should be fine. So from here, let's uh, CD into Hello World. and. Hit dir. Now here we've got the root of the Rails project. And what I want to do is bring up another text editor. We're not going to use Notepad. Notepad, the usefulness of Notepad starts to decrease when you get a large number of files that even a most minimal uh, Rails project has. So I'm going to go to start and I'm going to bring up a, a, an editor called Sublime. And you've got, um, you can go to I'll just quickly uh, Google it here. If you go to Sublime Text, uh, you can download this for free. And uh, it is, uh, it's free to download, but it's a trial period. It has a trial period, so 30 days or something. And if you can afford it, I definitely recommend uh, it as a text editor. It's, it's quite good. And I'm not getting paid to say that. Um, but if, if it's something useful, um, something I think you'd find useful, go ahead and download it. Now let's go back to Sublime Text here and I'm going to go on to uh, Project and I'm going to go Add Folder to Project and I'm going to find our project here, Dev and then Hello World, click OK. And what we want to first do is go to Config and in here there's a bunch of stuff we can change and, but pri the, primarily what we want to do first here is click on database.yml and, and add a password here. You want to make sure there's a space after the, semi after the colon here. So make sure there's a space and then type in your password. In my case, it's password1. And then control S to save it. And let's go back to um, the command prompt. Now, we want to, uh, with the proper password in place, we could manually go create a database if you want. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll just run the Rails command to do it. And that's a, a rake task that we can use is rake db create. So we'll do that. And with the proper database credentials, that should uh, create. Um, access needed. Oh, and actually, this is, this is good here. I'll just exit out of this or control C that. 
Um, we also need to create the test database if we do it this way. So make sure that you got password one for password up here for the development environment and then the test environment, you need the password in there as well. So let's go and do, let's run that command again. Right, so it's telling us that Hello World development already existed and that's okay and it went and created the test database as well, although we're not going to be worried about tests in this example. Uh, to double check that, you can do mysql dash dash user root dash p, add in your, enter your password and you can do show databases and you can see how there's hello world development and hello world test. So let's exit out of here. Next, um, let's start off with a uh, some simple scaffolding in Rails. It will generate a bunch of uh, code for you to sort of get you started. Uh, let's do Rails new, and we'll create something for uh, for a user. Our new sorry Rails uh, scaffold. Um, sorry, Rails generate scaffold, and we'll create it for a user. And we'll have a first name. We'll make that a string, and a last name string. So this will just be a simple uh, table uh, for uh, called users and we'll just hit enter. So this will generate some scaffolding and I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, see how a bunch of files it generated. Now to, to start up the Rails server we just type in Rails server or for short we can just leave it as Rails S. And once that server starts, we can go back, we can go to our browser, and let's open up a different uh, tab here. Um, what's it saying here? Uh, it's interesting. Well, we'll allow, let's see, Windows for, yeah, allow access. And um, let's do localhost 3000. And you can see here it says there's a migration, uh, pending migration error. Let's go back to um, the command here, or command prompt, and we'll control C to get out of that, and hit enter. Now what happened there, we generated the scaffolding, but I didn't run the database migration. And the way you do that is rake db migrate, so then hit enter. And what that'll do is it goes and, it'll go and create the table in the database, just like that. And now when we start the Rails server up again, we can now go back to the command, uh, go back to your browser and refresh, and you should be able to get this "Welcome aboard, you're riding Ruby on Rails." If you click on your application's environment, you should see something similar like this, right? And uh, if you can do that, then add here to localhost 3000 a slash users, and now what you should see is listing users. We'll click new user. And we'll just add in John McDonald, and we'll create user. Right? Let's. Uh, we'll add uh, maybe my sister. Okay. We'll click create user. Back. So now we've got two users in the database. Now, from the command prompt, we can uh, in Rails, we'll we'll, we'll uh, control C to get out of the web browser or the server. When you when you shut the server down, notice that when you go to refresh this, this isn't going to work because there's no server running, right? So if you want to have, let's start the server. I'm going to make this a little smaller here. And I'm going to bring my, I'm just, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch another command prompt. Okay, like say something like that. And get our browser back. So now we've got we've got users running. We've got the server running. We can hit the user's uh, URL there at localhost. If we go back to the command, uh, there's the server. But here now let's let's cd to uh, dev and then hello world. Oops, cd dev hello world. Dir here now we can run the Rails console. And again, we can disregard this warning. And from the Rails console, we can we can do we can run commands like user.count, and you can see that we got two users. 
So I'm running out of time, but that's how you install Rails on Windows. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know.